So welcome everyone. We are very excited to present our plan for the PSVI Coach Academy this evening and um, looking forward to um, your comments and questions that we're, we'll be able to answer at the end of the presentation. So first of all, just a note that our central office is located in the city of Nanaimo. And I would like to gratefully acknowledge the Nanaimo people for sharing their territory with us. Nanaimo culture is founded upon a deep connection to their land, waters, and all living things. Respect for this sacred relationship with all things in the natural world and the intricate relationships and interconnectedness interconnect we are all in together is a key value and principle in their culture. I would also like to acknowledge and thank the Coast Salish, particularly Vancouver Island and Sunshine Coast, Nuchana and Kwakwakawak, First Nations for allowing us to live, laugh, work and play in their territories that encompass our regional service area. Jeff, you can switch the slide. There we are, don't we look great? Um, so just a little introduction of our Coach Academy staff. My name is Catherine Edwards. I'm the General Manager of Pacific Sport Vancouver Island. A um, few of my credentials, I'm a BC Master Coach Developer. I'm currently a coach consultant with the Nanaimo Diamonds Artistic Swimming Club. And I'm a director and an athlete with the Nanaimo Paddling Center and Dragon Boat Canada. Kevin Lindo is our PSVI Athlete and Coach Services Coordinator. He is also the head coach of the VIU women's soccer team, and he's a coach and athlete with Nanaimo United Soccer. Jeff Hackett is our PSVI Special Projects and Mental Performance Consultant, and he is also a coach and athlete with Nanaimo United Soccer. Jade Richardson is our PSVI Marketing and Communications Coordinator. She's a former high performance track and field athlete with Nanaimo Track and Field Club and Simon Fraser University. And she's also an Nanaimo United soccer athlete. Hmm, I think there's a pattern here, <laughs> but I don't think I'm going to start playing soccer. Sorry, guys. <laughs> or maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> Next slide, please. So our mission, or it is our mission, to provide coach education on Vancouver Island through effective partnerships and world-class coach certification programs. We embrace the Sport for Life principles to enhance the quality of coach development for grassroots and aspiring coaches. Our vision at the PSVI Coach Academy is to develop coaches in a collaborative environment and provide them with the skills to excel in their coaching roles all those chairs are going to be filled. Mm -hmm. So a little bit about our commitment. Through leadership, we will lead through building honest relationships and value, we value the input that each coach contributes in the program. Integrity, we will be honest when communicating, dependable with our commitments and accountable with our actions. We will do what is right. Accessibility. We are dedicated to providing full inclusion in all of our programs. Coaches are encouraged to speak to us for their individual needs. And excellence, we strive for a high standard of service in our delivery and connection with our coaches. I believe this is me, right guys? This is you. Okay, so why join the, the Coach Academy? Um, well, we want to develop your coaching toolbox and, and we really want to delve into building the environment for athletes that you're going to be working with. Um, so it's going to be directed to what you guys are going to do individual, individually. Um, for instance, we might go into the four corner model. So you guys are obviously know your, tactic, your tactics and your technique of what you're doing. So we're going to help you build that environment from a, maybe physically, mentally, um, and then really tap into some of them values and philosophy, um, which I think can really be a great foundation and a backdrop for your coaching. And then when you're joining a coaching community, um, it, there's so many benefits. And I, I'd like to give you a story about my own exper experiential learning. You know, I grew up in the formative years of my coaching, um, just strictly coaching soccer, or as football, we call it where I'm from. 
And it was very siloed. You know, I never knew what other coaches and athletes were doing from other sports. You know, and that, that's great because you can master your own sport. You're very dedicated to one thing. However, you don't really know what's, what's around the corner until you take a peek. So when I came to Canada, I was uh, really fortunate to, to be enrolled into the International Coaching School down at the Canadian Sport Institute. And it just completely opened my eyes and broke down so many barriers for me. You know, being in a room with so many other coaches from so many different sports. One thing it does straight away, it really, it really makes you listen because you, you don't really know what other people's experiences are. And it really helps you take your guard down as well. And I found that that just became a real, just a real great pull for learning. And not only that is you find out you're all, you're all working to one common goal and you're all trying to get predominantly young people better, better prepared, better decision maker in life and in sport. And, and then as far as a, a coaching community, you know, I still talk to them people, even though it was five something years ago, I still talk to them people on a weekly, monthly basis. I see them in courses that um, I do now and that I plan to do in the future. Um, so it's a tight knit group, even though you might be from different areas of the province. And uh, that you really can't put a price on that. So I think that's what we're trying to emulate here with the Coach Academy. Um, so the benefits are, in our opinion, are going to be long lasting. Uh, you can move on, Jeff. So what will you get from the Academy, apart from all that awesomeness I just said? So these are kind of our pillars. So we want you to come out with something tangible. So we want you to gain accreditation. Now, if you've been on the, the coach.ca website, you'll see a whole, whole um, smorgasbord of uh, accreditations you can do, qualifications, whether it be making ethical decisions or fundamental movement skills, all multi-sport pathway. So we're going to offer some of them to you. And um, we're going to base that on the participants that we have. Okay, so if you've done a lot of those things, then we'll try and get you to some things that maybe you haven't done or maybe that align with your sport uh, but there will be multi-sport modules that you will come away with and that we can actually teach you leadership training i'm going to park that and Catherine's going to talk about that in the next few slides access to a coaching network so building on what i spoke about with the coaching community we run elevate speaker series where we bring in our partners so we have physiotherapists um, chiropractors um, concussion experts dietitians uh, mental performance consultants such as Jeff, who are going to talk about their expertise and you guys can really latch onto that, help out and get some professional development there. Plus, we rub shoulders with Olympians and high performance coaches, which takes me to my next, uh, the next pillar there, mentorship. So our promise to you guys is that whoever comes in as a participant are going to be mentored carefully and 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 supported well by a mentor from the community. Um, we're looking for high performance coaches uh, who also have an experience in grassroots too and can take you guys from one level of coaching to the next um, by showing you, shadowing, and also giving you tips and, uh, tips and advice of the trade um, from a face-to-face from a -face perspective as well. Um, so there will be qualified people from the community. And this is our timeline. So we're hoping to kick it off in September. Um, and that will be our phase one. And that will be, uh, well, will take us through our Christmas break. Uh, we'll, we wanted to do a 12 month program because we understand there's summer sports and there's uh, winter sports. Um, so we didn't really want to leave anybody out. Um, we think a 12 month program, we think it will cover a lot of bases. It won't be too heavy because it will be periodized. You know, we'll give you a, Plenty of time for breaks in there, for holidays, um, but also enough time to really get our teeth into a lot of this content and a lot of the topics that we're going to deliver. So we're going to fall, then we'll go into um, our winter program, which is kind of a year from now. And then we'll move into our spring, April to June. And then in the summer program, um, we'll look to finish off in August time as well, where we will also look to bring in some assessments as well, some tasks. Um, to really give you that them tangible, uh, them tangible benchmarks that you can leave the program with.
And here's how it's going to work. The in-person learning, hopefully we'll get to see faces, we'll get to shake hands, we'll get to hang out in uh, facilities. Um, so that's, we're kind of hoping that. If not, we'll do what the world has done and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be creative and we'll work on the fly there and, and figure out the best way. Obviously, there'll be online coursework, which Jeff's going to talk about a little bit in the next few slides. Um, and he's got some really cool creative ways to do that. Uh, and the mentorship, like we said, so that's going to be on the field or on the court with your mentors, whatever your sport is, they'll help you out. You'll be able to shadow with them and see what they do too. And they'll be connecting with you um, from distance as well, whether that be um, video calls or on the phone or via email. I think this is my final one. So coaching courses, like I said, um, we'll be running some coaching courses within this program, which I think is great because, as you know, it's if you're in this program, you're kind of committed. So we've always run courses through Pacific Sport, but it's like anything. it's uh, You're always dependent on getting numbers in. So it has been often where we've had courses, two or three people, four or five people have, have signed up, ready to go. Unfortunately, we might have had to cancel uh, because of uh, lack of registration. Well, we won't have that with this. You know, everything we plan, it'll have the participants in and, and you won't miss out like that. So once you're in, you will be getting these courses and will be dedicated from a, from a lecturer standpoint and a participant standpoint. And they will be NCCP courses as well as other professional development that we'll look into. PSVI workshops, um, that is ones that we will do in, and we'll teach some of them soft skills. So things like developing your coaching philosophy, developing the environment, um, working on pedagogy, all items of that nature will be in our own uh, PSVI workshops. And this, this one in the right hand corner, the video, video analysis, that's something I'm really excited about too. But we're likely going to bring in a, a third party for that. Um, someone who can really deliver some world leading video analysis and performance analysis topics. Uh, and get some accreditation for that education and you will also get a subscription for that too um, and the, the company that we'll be using will be performance innovation and the final one is the leadership program which um, our general manager Catherine is going to speak about so I'm really excited about this um, leadership uh, component uh, of the curriculum it's going to be take the form of more of a collaborative approach as opposed to a facilitator talking and you listening um, there will be reading assignments that will be handed out ahead of time and then the actual face-to-face uh, -face or via Zoom um, sessions will be a more discussion and conversation about the article, about the leadership assignment that we have. Um, coaches will be split into smaller groups um, so that we can have meaningful discussions and everyone will have an opportunity to say what they need to say about what we're discussing and be able to contribute meaningfully. Uh, the sessions will be recorded and that way all coaches will be able to see all of the other leadership uh, sessions as well, uh, whether it be on the same topic or on another, um, and so that they can learn from other coaches. And then Finally, we will have four of these leadership um, sessions and each session will you will be matched up with a different group of coaches so that we are able to hear different points of view and, and not just on a recording, but be able to hear that in person. So I'm very excited about this and, and have some great, um, great articles and great information to share. Great, thank you, Catherine. And uh, so what I'd like to just kind of build on in some of this as we just talk about um, some of the Pacific Sport Vancouver Island workshops. And as Kevin outlined in the, in the different phases of the program, you know, the idea is to maybe have, you know, one or two or more, more than one, two workshops a phase that outline and kind of look at different sort of content that relates to you as in developing as a coach, um, following in the lines of some of the ways that Kevin described with developing values and, and understanding, you know, what the role of um, the kind of like uh, values in your program and, and more specifically, like what's the big picture from a coach? You know, what, what are you trying to do? How are you looking to guide your behavior as a coach? And what are the sort of principles that, 
you know, allow you to really go out and, and make an impact with the programs you work with. And then from there, we also transition to maybe something that's a little bit more focused on the details of being organized and how you develop practice sessions, how you develop a seasonal plan, uh, how you work with athletes on the mental side of your game, which is something that I'll spend some time in this program working about. And so when we meet together in, whether it's in person or online, um, it's meant to be kind of a collaborative, almost classroom environment. And then from that, what really is the kind of a piece that ties it together is that, you know, the, the, the topic and the way that we can kind of engage in some group learning on those, on those different subjects will be really followed up um, by some online coursework. And this isn't meant to be something that's uh, extremely onerous uh, on your time, but it's meant to really follow up and allow you to apply some of the lessons and some of the messages that you learn in the workshops, um, you know, in your own context. And so this is something that we've done recently this past year as how, as we've transitioned, you know, to, to making, still, still making connections with our community um, through, through sport education is that we've done a lot of work uh, to get things online. And so how this, you know, is going to really look is that for example, you could take a workshop, you know, in the first week of October, we could, whether that's in Zoom, um, you know, in person or on Zoom, um, you know, that workshop would be one hour to 75 minutes, uh, let's just say, for example. And then from there, you probably have, you know, a maybe um, an assignment that you go and complete that would be like an additional hour that allows you to really dive into the details of how that subject is going to look for you. And so that's where the online coursework comes in. And so it's self-paced in terms of, you know, there will be a deadline, like I, ideally, like you'd have the assignment completed before we do our next workshop, because there is going to be kind of a link and a sequence to what we do throughout the year. But it's meant to be self-paced and, and an opportunity for you to work in, you know, what you're doing on your own, um, with your own schedule with the other aspects of your life. And so we use Google Classroom for this. It's a really simple online um, online platform, and um, it's very user friendly and something that we can kind of just totally control in house. And so, you know, that's something that um, is going to kind of really reinforce and tie together a lot of the content and the curriculum in 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 what we do. And so. It's going to be a balance between you know what we do in person, uh, what you do online, and then how that's reinforced by what you do in the field with your mentorship um, component. And so, you know, details and specifically on what these kind of different workshops, um, you know, we can we can answer some questions at the end about what that's going to look like a little bit more specifically. Um, but that's kind of the idea. And you know, if you're the context for you as a coach, when well, when you if you were to join this program. Um, you know, there's going to be certain expectations and certain commitments of time, but there's also going to be that flexible space as well, where you can go away, work on things on your own pace, and then we meet together and kind of continue on the, you know, the process that we're following throughout the year. And so um, one of the pieces that we really haven't um, spoken a lot of time with, and I think, um, you know, what I want to spend a bit of time discussing here is this, uh, this mentorship piece. Um, and so this is something that, you know, and, and Catherine and Kevin, feel, please feel free to, to chime in and, and um, add, add your points as well. But this is something that you know, we're, we're really excited about. And, it, and it's an important piece of learning, you know, in the program here. Um, and so coaches are going to be assigned mentors. And, you know, there's going to be a fit that we work with, whether, you know, it's in the same sport or a different sport. Um, and it's going to be involving, you know, kind of how you meet face to face with that mentor and how they observe you and you observe them in their coaching practice. And this is a whole process that is being kind of outlined and supported by Pacific Sports. So, Catherine, maybe I'll just hand it over to you there to kind of maybe outline a, a little bit more detail um, if, if you have something to share around how Pacific Sports supports this mentorship process. Uh, great. Thanks, Jeff. Um, so. Uh, we've been in conversation with a number of high performance coaches and um, asking for their input and if they are interested in becoming one of our mentors. Uh, so we've got a, a, a wonderful uh, group of people who are interested. Uh, once we have our coaches in place who are going to be participating in this program, then we'll be able to see how we match the potential mentors to our coaches. We want to make sure that it's going to be a, a good pairing so that there's going to be a lot of learning going on. Uh, one thing I particularly like about um, doing this mentorship piece is it is so beneficial to learn from a coach in your own sport, but it's even more so to learn from a coach in another sport. Um, there are so many things that are applicable and cross through different sports um, that you can only come out with way more knowledge than you started out with. 
So I'm, I'm really happy about that combination that we're going to be able to provide. Um, we um, expect that probably, you know, depending on how COVID turns out uh, over the next year, uh, many of these meetings may be via Zoom, um, but as those health regula regulations relax, we'll have much more opportunity for face-to-face -face interaction and also being able to see our mentor in action um, and, and be able to have conversations about that. Uh, so it's, it's, I think it's going to be a really beneficial piece for each of our coaches. Excellent. Okay, the brass tacks, the money. <laughs> so um, the uh, tuition for the Coach Academy is $1,500 per coach. Uh, we have, um, have an, a variety of funding options um, that is available and to make this much more affordable. Uh, so uh, starting with, uh, we have a commitment from Island Savings, we have a bursary available to uh, potentially uh, sponsor four coaches um, at um, a minimum of $750, which is half price, half the price of the tuition. Um, and depending on how many coaches apply for that bursary will depend on whether we are able to support at a higher amount. And that will be something that once you've been selected as a coach in the program, then uh, you'll be able to make an application to, to us for that bursary. We have also had a number of um, LSOs or local sport organizations who have indicated that they are prepared to support one of the coaches in their club, either in part or in whole. And um, I mean, that's a super way to, to get your coaches trained well and, and, and commitment from your coaches into your program. There are also um, a number of external uh, grants that can be applied for once you've been accepted into the program. The RBC, um, it's actually called uh, RBC Future Launch Scholarship, which is actually up to $1,500 for successful applicants. And this scholarship um, fund is specifically for programs like ours. So it doesn't have to be a traditional education program where you would go into university or you're in high school. It's um, it's for programs like this. Um, Via Sport also has a number of other um, grant options like the Bob Bear Park Bursary and Coaches BC Legacy Grants. So again, those would be up to the individual coaches once they've been accepted into the academy to apply for those grants. In addition, um, we have applied to the WISE Fund and are expecting to hear back in March and should we be successful, this fund will be able to support one to two female coaches in our program. Um, and we are in conversation with other organizations with the hope that they will also um, commit to sponsoring um, some coaches from their communities. Um, in addition, we are very happy to set up uh, an easy payment plan for those coaches who are unable to receive sponsorship um, so that it, it is still an easy thing to do and 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 hopefully that really helps a lot great so i can uh i can just speak to this uh, application process so um what we're looking for is kind of just to get this information out you know is during this time and, and allow you know roughly two and a half um you know maybe three Two months to to kind of have coaches decide and 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 maybe make some connections within their local sports to consider applying for this program so the reason we have like a may 31st deadline is that you know there's just a certain sort of um next steps that we need to consider with coaches you know in this program as we get prepared for the fall um so what this application process looks like and the application is not necessarily live just yet um but it would be an online sort of application that's off our website that you would um, submit the kind of standard sort of documents that outline some of your background, some of your interest in, in what your future plans are within your sport and some and options for different references that would be appropriate for this application. And so, you know, it, it's meant to be fairly straightforward from this next part here. And, and we're just kind of um, very excited to kind of offer this this opportunity to the community and 
and are kind of welcome, you know, some feedback and some questions at this point about, you know, what, what, um, what are some things that, you know, we can maybe dive into a little bit more or explain a little bit further for you. So, um, yeah, Ke Kevin and Catherine, um, if there's anything that you wanted to add about this, we can kind of open up the, uh, the room for some questions. I just wanted to add that in your cover letter, some things that I would really like to see is, of course, what, what is your sport? What's your background? What are your ambitions and your skills that you bring to the table? But really, what fires you up about coaching in your sport? What is it that gets you to come out to all those practices and help your athletes do the best that they can? That's going to be really important for me. Excellent. All right. So, you know, with that, with all that said, um, we now love to have an opportunity to hear from um, everyone that's um, that's attending this call tonight. So if you wanted to put something in the chat, um, I think Jade's managing that. If, if it's easier for you just to turn on your microphone and, and ask away, um, please do so. But we'd love to hear some um, initial thoughts and, and any questions that you have that relate to something we talked about. Jeff, can you stop sharing the screen so we can see people's faces? Yes. Thank you. So I've got a question that's come through the chat here. So if in-person class time does go ahead, Jeff, uh, Catherine, Kevin, would it be evenings or daytimes, weekends, evenings? Uh, how would that look? Uh, we need to work with our coaches and what's, what the timing works for them as well. And that's why it's important that we have our coaching uh, applicants selected in, in June. And so that we have the summer to prepare, uh, not only to make sure that we are providing the courses that they haven't taken yet um, and matching them with their mentors, but also getting a schedule of everybody's time because everyone is coaching. Probably um, many of those are also going to school or working full time. So we need to be able to marry those schedules up so that we can have everybody available. Ryan, you have your hand up. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Um, my, my, I'm just curious. Um, I'm guessing that uh, uh, based on the geography that uh, PSVI covers, that you're looking for coaches from uh, the full geography of PSVI coverage? Yes, we yeah. are. Yeah, we're looking kind of all over um, all over the island from kind of the, the Malahat to North Island and over to the Sunshine Coast and, and obviously places that, you know, open places on the island outside of that, but that's kind of our main focus that's there. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Got a question through here. Uh, can high schools age students apply? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, I think that's the, we're, there's no real, um, we, the the application process is meant to be pretty pretty flexible and, and open to because you know everyone gets involved in coaching at a different point um, you know so, some of us have an opportunity to do it from a young age uh, some of us come around to it maybe after um, looking at a new way to transition in through your involvement in sport um, so there's definitely um, yeah definitely appropriate for for high school students to to consider applying as well and um, with some of the if Catherine if you go back to the um, RBC future launch grant. Um, there are some certain restrictions around that in terms of the age and that 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 grant that grant opportunity, for example, is, you know, geared towards someone between, I believe, um, eight, 17 to, to 29, I think it's kind I think of it was, it's actually 15 to 29. 15, so 15, that 15. would actually be a great opportunity for someone high school age to apply for such a grant and potentially have that covered if they were an applicant. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Uh, one thing that that limits us with age is the certification through NCCP and I believe um, 16 is the um, lower age limit but if there are 15 year olds applying um, and they're turning 16 within the year of the uh, coach academy uh, then they'll get their certification once they turn 16. Got another question in the chat here from Gavin. Do you need a level one coaching credit before entering the program? And level one coaching credit, is that specific to your sport? 
I'm guessing um, maybe we could just talk about even what kind of credits you need uh, as coaches at all to enter. Is it, can you have never completed any formal training or can this kind of be a, a launching pad if you've got some, you know, in-person experience under your belt? Yeah, I would say, do you, do you want me to answer that, Catherine? I'll try to answer Sure. That. Yep, you go ahead. Yeah, I would say, you know, our goal with this program is to take coaching, coaches kind of from the, from the developing side of your career, if you like, uh, at this stage into the next stage or give you some direction. So although we haven't got any prerequisites for your, um, for, from your specific sport, we're not asking for that. Um, what we do is ask for um, real dedication to your sport, being good standing with your organization and hopefully your provincial organization as well. Um, and that you're dedicated to the program as well. So the answer to the question is uh, no, you don't need a level one in your sport or however that may transfer. Um, but you just need to show that desire um, in your cover letter and obviously an ambition and dedication to the program. You, you need to be coaching that that's definitely one thing that we we want to have we want active coaches whether they have certification or not we would like active coaches yeah but we want to be as inclusive as possible with this yes i've got so a be, question in here from clayton and what is the n certification yeah well the uh the ends there there's a few things that we're looking to kind of equip coaches with and one of them is, and this is a this is the start of this program, is you would be a Pacific Sport Vancouver Island Coach Academy graduate. And there'd also be NCCP certification um, that falls in line with, you know, some some holistic multi-sport modules that are required for um, your coach development. And then there's also access to, like Kevin mentioned, with performance analysis, with some video analysis training. Um, so it's kind of a combined sort of a approach, um, but the the end product here is not necessarily just one specific thing, um, but it, it's kind of a well-rounded approach that looks at a number of different areas of development as a coach. And Catherine, Jade, uh, Kevin, what, what would you guys add to that? Uh, yeah, so in terms of NCCP, um, we are um, providing courses at the competition introduction level as well as the competition development level in multi-sport. Um, and uh, again, as we mentioned, um, some coaches may be coming in already having uh, taken some of these courses and that's where we will then um, uh, modify what they will take in terms of being able to give them something they haven't taken at the NCCP level um, so that they can come up with, with more certification than they, than they came in with. And to touch on that, Catherine, another question. Do the credits go toward the second level of NCCP? And I'm not sure if that's maybe one of the things you just mentioned, the different, if it's just different language surrounding what that means, but can they go towards that second level? I'm making an assumption that you mean second level is competition development. I'm not sure. Yes, yes, that's what yes. You so yes, we do have competition development level courses in the program as well as competition introduction. Yeah, maybe something in the in the cover letter or the application maybe potential applicants can actually indicate which ones they would like to take if they could and cc3 modules and then that would give us a bit of an idea on what kind of content to run right we'll uh, we'll be expecting everyone uh who has taken nccp courses to be uh putting their nccp number uh on their resume or in the cover letter so that we can uh, know in advance um, what courses you have taken and where there might be some gaps that we can help fill. Um, some other courses that we are going to be offering um, uh, some sport for life courses all around inclusivity and acceptance and um, those are going to be really beneficial to all of our new coaches. So we've got a question here from Tristan, how long has Pacific Sport Vancouver Island been an organization on the island for? Since 1995. And I've got one from Shirley. The fee of $1,500 covers how many courses exactly? 
And so um, they add that they're a level one NCCP certified coach at this time, and they're just beginning level two in lawn bowling. Cool. <laughs> You know, <laughs> off the top of my head, I, I, I can't remember how many we have. Jeff, do you remember? Um, I mean, with in-house, we like we can offer, uh, I think, four different uh, four different NCCP courses. But the actual sort of to, to answer the context for your question and make it, maybe make it a little bit more clear is like we'll definitely get kind of an environmental scan of our applicants around who has taken what, like, so obviously, um, surely you've taken some courses that may be offered in the course. And so it wouldn't be about you obviously not retaking those courses, but finding the opp opportunities for you to um, take the ones that are, are left on your, um, left, left on your CV or, or, or left to complete, you know, as you complete your coaching goals. And so that's just related to the NCCP. And then Kat, we also, there's also some other third-party courses as well as about seven different workshops that are run kind of in-house um, within the Pacific Sport Coach Academy on top of the other components around leadership and mentorship. So um, yeah, the, there's definitely kind of a wide range of different options for everyone. And there's going to be some things that are, you know, everyone's going to take. And then there's going to be some things that because, you know, you don't, you've already taken some courses but other people haven't, then obviously you would, um, we'd find another course that you need um, to join. I think the really interesting part about this program is that it's going to be very tailored to each individual while also being um, a cohesive and a group enterprise at the same time. So it's really got that nice balance of you being a focus um, of us, each individual coach will be our focus at the same time as they're playing a, a larger role in a group. Yeah. Brian, you have a question? Yes, please. Um, I'm just curious in terms of um, um, recognized um, accreditation. So with the NCCP, um, there's a recognized accreditation you know, across the country in terms of if you take these NCCP courses, uh, they go into your locker and you're gonna get, to, you know, there's a, uh, an accrediting body as it were that um, that is a recognized body for um, for coaching, with the rest of the um, 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 items that are in the uh, uh, um, uh, coach academy. We're looking at things like mentorship. We're looking at things like leadership. Is there any um, um, you know recognized um, um, accreditation in the leadership um, uh, portion? Um, I understand from the conversation we've just had that there is some accreditation in terms of video analysis and. What type of accreditation is that? I know from a from a coaching perspective myself, that's the kind of thing that I'm looking for is making sure that um, you know that um, any education that I'm getting is going to be recognized education in terms of uh, forwarding me in the in the coaching ranks wherever I might go. So and uh, so having that um, um, recognized accreditation, and I just wonder, you know, my curiosity is around uh, what is the, that type of accreditation. So specific. So I know. Sorry, sorry, Jeff. Um, Kevin um, has been uh, looking into um, having conversations with Via Sport about getting uh, many of our um, Scott soft skills workshops that we'll be offering uh, for PD points uh, for your NCCP. So that will be uh, very supportive in that way. Yeah, and in terms of the video analysis, we're working on getting a level one. A level one with the International Society of Performance Analysis. So you will come away with that. Got a question here. How many applicants will we be taking into the program? Well, <laughs> we we were we're we're looking in uh, to a, a cohort of ten. Um, but if we have an overwhelming response from um, coaches uh, wanting to apply, uh, we'll open it up to more. And Shirley, to answer your question uh, directly, um, the answer is yes, we would take into account your prior learning. So your, your courses that you've taken, like the ethical decisions course, if that's what you're referring to, or, or other ethics courses related to sport would all um, would definitely all count towards things that you've done and, and, and so your background and your your coaching history so to answer your question the answer is yes
Yeah, I think, uh, Brian, you got a great point. Um, you know, as a coach, we're always looking to kind of get education, but want, want that to be credible and want that to be on the CV and tangible so that we can take that into other walks of life and environments. So we've definitely thought long and hard about that, which is why, you know, we want to have a core NCCP uh, existence within the program so that people come out with things on their locker. And if you're not sure what the locker is, is it's the platform that uh, all your NCCP stuff is recorded under. So we want you to come out with those items. Um, so you, you will get four, five, six, however, may, however many it may be uh, modules. So those will be accreditations, the video analysis. So we're hoping that bunch of accreditations will really hold a lot of weight in when it's coupled with all the soft skill education from the province, from the uh, Pacific sport workshops too. Right. So I hope that kind of gives just a bit of clarity within that. Yeah. Just one other thing on that, uh, Kevin, is the, uh, the fact that, um, you, you know, with um, uh, coach certification, uh, there is uh, PD points that are necessary. So I'm sure that some of the things that, uh, that go on within uh, uh, the coach Academy will certainly um, give PD points to uh, participants. That's for sure. Most certainly. Yeah. We're hoping that's going to, that's going to be the case. And uh, got a question here, just wondering when applications will be accepted. So uh, we're going to close applications May 31st of this year, 2021 for our September intake. And I believe we're just in the works right now of setting up the actual application software and platform within our website. And we should have that up shortly. I'm in, in early March, Clayton, we'll, yeah. we'll have um, yeah. we're, we're making sure that it's good and then that there's no glitches, so it's as smooth a process as possible for everyone. Mm -hmm. And now you've all seen my face, so if it's not smooth, you can yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other questions? I think one big thing we wanted to, when we when we started to devise this kind of program, I think uh, we all felt fortunate enough to be involved in sport full time, uh, by hook or by crook, and uh, we just wanted to create some sort of direction within the community, because um, we often rub shoulders with coaches who, who um, think, oh, you know, this would be great to be in a program, uh, be doing this full time, or you know, or maybe don't know who to ask or where to go in terms of um, having coaching or having leadership or managing a program in their life in a full-time basis. So I think this was one of the foundational pieces of evolving this program, right, Catherine? Right. So we're hoping this will give a bit of direction and a bit of uh, education about where you might want to go in your, in your coaching, whether it's um, you just want to delve into it, um, you might be a keen parent coach, or you want this to really take you onto another level in terms of a career. One thing that um, is really has been really important to me in my career, and I, I started coaching back in the in when I was in high school in the early seventies, um, is that at at in the early training of the NCCP, it was always thought that you start at level one, you go to level two, level three, and then when level four came around, you go to level four and you, everybody goes in that pathway, but, but not everybody wants to necessarily be a high performance coach. Some coaches want to be the best 10 and under soccer coach or lacrosse coach or whatever that they can possibly be. And they, and they want to have all of those courses and all of those skills to be able to put into their group of 10 and under young athletes. And um, I, I just want to make it really clear that this is not always a pathway to high performance, the Olympics, et cetera. There's always those excellence, the excellence at, with the young kids and not everybody's great with young kids. And there are those special people who are, and same with the, the young teens. And then, you know, and then there are those coaches who are great with high performance athletes who are really focused, but we need to have great coaches at all those levels. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really hope we're going to get out of this program. And I think that too includes coaching older athletes as well, 
you know, yes. you, you, you're an athlete your entire life. If that's what, if that's what you're passionate about and that's what you're doing and, and senior coaches mm -hmm. they're senior athletes and masters athletes, even when they're not high performance still need that uh, excellent coaching base and, and those people yeah. in, in their lives as well. True. Great. Well, if there's no other um, questions or anything like anything to add, what I wanted to just bring everyone's attention to is as a coaching workshop that we have available this weekend. Uh, and it's looking more at the mental side of the game and how you work with athletes on developing mental skills in your sport. There's some details there. I've put the uh, link in the uh, chat here. And for attending tonight, um, there's a uh, free that ignore that promo code there there's a free p for 100 percent off on the course um there's a use the promo code free psvi and so this core this this workshop this weekend is four hours on saturday morning and it's looking at different mental skills and how you as a coach can work on setting realistic goals for your athletes and developing motivation and managing other aspects of your sport around relating to um, intensity and pressure and uh, developing different focus strategies as they relate to what you do as your coach so um, something that we want to, it's kind of a bit of an insight. If you're interested in what um, this PSVI Coach Academy can look like, um, there'll be an opportunity for you to kind of maybe take it kind of almost like a test run of what some of the education can look like um, in this program. So something that um, kind of ties in well with what we're doing this week. And it's an opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about what this education can look like. Big pressure yeah, on you, you home, Jeff, this weekend. Yeah. Then. <laughs> Jeff, can you repeat that promo? code please yes it's in the chat as well um so it's a free psvi all caps one word so you can see that Great. there um the we can also send this out in an email as well afterwards too absolutely yep that so we'll just leave the chat open there if there's any um if you're interested you can just follow the link um from there and yeah, it's an opportunity, like I just mentioned, for you to kind of get a bit of an insight as to what maybe what some of this education can look like and how you can learn about something within your coaching practice and get some tangible, practical tools that you can apply to what you're doing. So yeah, really appreciate everyone's uh, time this evening to come and listen and learn a little bit about this opportunity. And I know I speak for everyone at Pacific Sport that we're really excited to uh, offer this out to um, our, our, our coaching community and, and looking forward to um, working with coaches in the future. So thank you. Uh, yeah, Jeff, please, so, feel free sorry, to. someone's asking for email details. Yeah, if they're not on the slide, feel free to email us at the, uh, on, our, on the website. You could email me if you like. Would that be, would that save a little bit of time for everyone if everyone just emails me? Oh, Jeff, you put it in there. I'll just okay. put, I'm just putting uh, emails in the. Uh, okay. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, because there's probably uh, you'll come away with this, and you'll you might there might be some other questions or ideas that you might have, and and feedback too, because we're all well open to listening to feedback. It's for the community, so we want to hear from you if there's if you have some ideas or concerns. Well, thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Um, it looks like a, a great program, and um, I'm certainly going to pass the word on to uh, some of the lacrosse folks in town. Thanks, Brian.